This is for all my juggalos and juggalettes. Another in the bag roast. Currently making this video in a Starbucks parking lot in the middle of Louisiana on my way to Texas. So sorry if you hear any white chicks angry about no pumpkin spice. Kinda how I assume KJ is gonna sound when I tell him to switch his butter. I don't know how many times I gotta say it, but the roach isn't it. I'm not gonna put the full blame on you, however. Since I know the floppy guys love to spread their propaganda worse than people that actually think the judge is worth putting with. You guys are going to be proud of me since the last time I talked about the proxy. I've actually had the chance to throw one. Yeah, I joined another person playing on the course, and while I was consensually fingering his bag, I noticed he had a proxy. Having no choice but to ask if I could give it a toss, and was pleasantly surprised. I felt as if I gave it a decent amount of power, and it held up nicely with still some fade. Something I had been looking for. Except not the greatest hand feeling for me, although the plastic was alright. Don't ask me what kind, because I have no idea what kind of shit MVP uses. I'll pretend it's the glow plastic for your sake, KJ. Good choice. Wow, I don't say that often about MVP. I must be getting more mature. F*** the mind bender. The only bender I want to go on is me and a case of natural light because apparently drinking Miller made me a bitch. I love the strategy of naming discs something new in hopes of selling more plastic. At least you have another MD1, but for some reason, you got the Horizon version. I would hate that, but backing a mind bender is bad enough. Gets even worse with an MD3. Discmania has an okay mid-range selection, at best. However, the fairway drivers might be the best out there. I just don't get down for the mids. Am I crazy, or is the zone actually a mid-range? Way too many f***ing people call it a mid, but I swear to Disc Golf Jesus, it's a putt and approach disc. Comment below so we can solve this damn problem, because it pisses me off that people don't acknowledge it the correct way. Also, this is a good way for me to determine the smart people from the dumb. Pretty easy to tell, too. Just look if they bag a zone. It's a safe bet if they do. Not in this case for KJ, but most of the time. I actually don't bag a zone currently, which you guys probably could have guessed based on that. I like to see the heat in the bag. A nice understable fairway drive that should get even slower arm players a chance to flip up an S. If you're out there looking for a disc to get turned easier, try this disc out. Same goes for the mall. Most of you should give this disc a try, especially for players looking for more turn with less effort. This should be a go-to. It's one of those discs you should be able to hand to everyone, and they can get it to fly straight, and if things go right, so should the disc. Plus, if you mess up, you can hit them with a the mole again, and if this is in your bag, you'll need a few of them for sure. It's usually never a good thing when I have to look up what a disc is before I can talk about it. Does anyone throw the West Side hatchet? I've seriously never heard of the thing, but from the flight numbers, I'm not hating it. Seems to be a manageable fairway that will have a reliable fade after some natural turn. At least that's if you believe in flight numbers. Who am I kidding? This thing probably sucks. On to the next. I would have told you a couple years ago that the Explorer was a great choice for those looking to step up in stability and start crushing. This disc isn't all that bad, but I'd be lying if I said there wasn't like 84 other discs that could do the same shit. So why put a Latitude disc in your bag when you don't have to? KJ, we made it this far without any huge problems. Well, besides the whole roach fiasco. But why the hell do you need this tilt in your bag? And if you even try for a second to tell me whatever the hell this is, I might swing on you. The Jet is never a disc I thought I'd be recommending, but here we are. Actually, once I started examining the thing, it makes perfect sense. You know why? Because it resembles the greatest disc ever made, the Wild Honey. So might as well not throw a knockoff and get the real thing. The DD-1 is another solid disc choice. I'm a fan of the understability that I hope is thrown more often than the more stable discs in your bag, as long as weather cooperates. If the wind starts to be a problem, it's good to have the Hades in there. Or if something serious is coming at you, a Wraith should be able to fight it. And if shit goes crazy, the Cloudbreaker 4 will be able to handle it no problem. Overall, I'm a fan of the driver selection. It seems to me that you understand your game. The issue with that is, I'm only assuming. And there's a greater chance of you completely f***ing it up. That's alright though, because there's no way you can make any worse decisions than Ryan over here. Now I'll give him credit for picking a better putter than the damn Roach. A P2, and of course, it's the Innova made one. He's not that stupid. Well, I might have talked too soon, because I've never seen someone with more than half a brain bag a pig. Then put the Berg on top of it, and for the cherry on top, a glitch. Call your life a fucked up mess. What's going on here? You bag every cop-out approach disc they try to pawn off on the poor disc golfers with holes in their wallet. The thumb track makes you think your forehand's working, but replace the pig and watch your approach game improve. Stop convincing yourself you need the bird to die out of the sky and learn how to throw the watt you have in the bag. That thing seriously needs some love, getting overshadowed by the evil stepsisters you call your discs when you got Cinderella over there on the bench. 
There's not even a replacement for the glitch. Just get that thing as far away from you as possible. The good news is, you shouldn't really be able to get worse than that. Hey, a Mako 3. Finally something good in this thing. Followed up with a Hex? Hell yeah. Oh shit, a Meteor 2? You know what's better than two understable mid-ranges? Three of them, baby. To be fair, my Hex is not understable, like, at all, so I won't count that. But what's the difference between the Mako 3 and a Meteor? One's flippy and the other's flippy as shit? I guess that's a play. I don't know how you manage any slower shots that needs to fade rather quickly. Tell me the pig and I'll never play around with you again. Joking, of course, but I don't see how a pig could fly as far as you would need it to. Since you bag a T-Bird 3, I know there must be some sort of brain left in there. You really had me wondering up until now. This also feels like the first disc in your bag that you can truly handle all the power you put into it without really having to worry about it turning over. A good complement to that is the heat and the maul, which will have much more flip reacting the opposite of the T-Bird 3. Should also be great for quick hyzer flips in the woods that don't need a lot of power to flip and bend around whatever is in your way. Oh, and that getaway? Yeah, get that shit away from you. I don't want that thing too close to your other discs. Might contaminate them or something. Kicking off the drivers with a Mamba is something I like to see, as most disc golfers should have one in the bag, and if you're the dude sitting there thinking, no way, that's you, you probably should bag three. It's a great disc for when it's just not your day. You can pull it out, and now you have a disc that'll at least turn for you. A Halo Beast is a great choice. A 10 speed that flips up with some fight back, and with that Halo giving it some extra stability. Sounds like a recipe for smooth shots that don't require a whole lot of power to get some nice S flights. Or, if you need some big flip-up bombs, the DD-1 could do some serious work, especially with some tailwind and nothing in your way to hit, because I know your ass will find it if it's there. I love to see the DDX in the bag, it was one of the first discs I fell in love with. Once I realized maybe half my bag being filled with destroyers wasn't a good idea, I got this as a Valentine's Day present. And this disc had the natural turn my noodle arm needed, finally allowing me to get to the next step of distance. Sure, it may have been 350 feet, but I was getting there and it was much better than the unintentional spike hyzers tombstoning 100 feet in front of me. The Thrasher is Discraft's version of the Wild Honey. I don't care if it was made first. Okay, I'm overplaying this honey thing. I'm starting to sound like every tilt thrower ever. I like the Thrasher for max distance shots you can put some hyzer on and trust that it will keep flipping until a soft finish. Or, if you really want to power into one, you can get it to hold for a while. Ryan must have told KJ to go f*** himself, proving he's the Stizzy King, throwing the Cloudbreaker 3 over the 4. But everyone knows the second run is the only one worth bagging. What's up with the Ballista Pro? Is it the poor man's destroyer or something? Everyone local to me swears on this thing, but I don't see why. The rim is thicker than Ice Spice for Christ's sake, and no one watching this video needs a damn 14 speed. I promise. And just when I started thinking I liked you, there you go with the damn tilt. I'm surprised you don't have a gum putt in this bitch, because you bag every other meme disc. Besides maybe the Rolo, which is surprising since you hardly throw anything over stable anyways. Shout out to Ryan and KJ for letting me roast their bags. Whoop whoop boys, go drink some cotton candy fago for me. It's the best flavor, and I'll die on the hill just as much as hating on the berg. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps out the channel, and your boy is currently living in a minivan on a disc golf road trip across the United States, so you don't want to miss out on that. I'm starting until the journey next episode, so make sure to subscribe. Like now. Or I'll just assume you bag only dynamic discs, and you don't want that.